Robert, come come here and, and, and talk to us if you will. You, you you can come a little closer. Sure. Um, you you stopped us here. We we were, we we're here doing our show, and you stopped us. And you wanted to talk to me, and you you wanted to tell me something. Um, we just heard the mayor there of Slippery Rock talk about the other Butler rally that he had been to. You were talking to me about that rally as well. Tell me the message you wanted me to understand, because there was something different about that rally versus this rally that you noticed. Yeah, um, my daughter and I went, um, I guess it was four years ago, at the Butler Airport, not even five mi miles from here. Um, it was an awe-inspiring event. We, we were just like, wow. But the one thing we noticed, we walked in there, and her and I, you know, we're, we're close. And the one thing we noticed that the airport has a lot of hangars, buildings kind of like this, but they hold planes. Every rooftop of every hangar had three, four, five guys on top of it. With when guns. you say guys, snipers? Law yes, enforcement so, with long guns on long top? Long guns, okay. yes. And even some of them in, in the sniper position, just scanning everywhere. And my daughter turned to me. To the and, point where you got there, you noticed them right away immediately it was the first thing she said to me she goes oh my gosh dad look at this she goes I never felt so safe in my life hey guys my name is Devory Darkins welcome back to my channel now what we're gonna be doing is a follow-up from the just disastrous events from yesterday uh, thankfully it didn't turn into a president actually being assassinated uh, but so that is a good thing However, it is a, a unfortunate time right now. And one of the things that I really want to talk about today is the Secret Service component, right? And how could the Secret Service allow someone to get a shot off in the first place? How could they allow someone to be even in the area, right? And so what we're going to do is just dive deep into that. And before I get into these clips, you already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. So let's play this clip. Uh, which is coming from someone who, I guess, was Secret Service at some point in time. Let's bring in former Assistant FBI Director Chris Swecker. We have this individual identified, the presumptive shooter, at 4.54 on a Sunday morning, about 10 hours after this attempted assassination took place. What is the FBI doing right now to figure out why this guy acted like this? Yeah, they're, they're dissecting every aspect of this person's life. I'm a little surprised it took them that long to identify him, but uh, they're looking at whether he, you know, whether he has ideology. Really quick, and this is something we're going to continue to see when something like this takes place, uh, something that is, um, that's going to get the nation's attention, how slow the media and even law enforcement are to respond um, because we live in a technology age where someone on X or TikTok or social media who is there, they probably have more accurate information than the actual agencies because they have too many people trying to answer the same question, right? It's just, it, it, they're almost too big for their own good in a sense. So it, it causes some level of delay and I don't think there's an excuse for that. I just think we need to figure a more efficient way uh, to really be on it. And if you are the FBI, I mean, that's just, this is why you're here, right? Or dri was driven by ideology, which would make this not just an assassination attempt, but domestic terrorism. Is there anyone else in his network, if you will, his social network that might have shared that ideology? Are there, you know, are there others? And, and, you know, Carly mentioned earlier about reconciling the, this discrepancy between, hey, there's no, there's no threat, but yet we haven't identified this person. You can't reconcile those two things. And, I, you know, I, 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 go, I also want to comment about what Jonathan Gilliam said earlier. He was spot on. This was a security breakdown from start to finish. And, you know, the, the, this was the, the, the primary goal, the primary mission of the Secret Service is to prevent this type of action and then react as, as swiftly as they can to get them out of the danger zone. Neither happened here. So I don't want to issue harsh judgments, but it was definitely a security breakdown. Yeah, well. yeah and that's the, the biggest takeaway is there definitely was a security breakdown. Um, if we actually go back over to X to take a look at the actual photo of the uh, scene, you guys will see here um, just a simple breakdown of it all. I mean, 
you know, it's not like the guy was 600 yards away, right? I mean, he's 148 yards, 200 yards, you know, that they should have been able to lock down this. Whatever you see in this photo should have been locked down. I mean, just no, no question about it. Uh, but for whatever reason, you know, that that is the actual question that needs to be answered. Um, there needs to be a full investigation. There needs to be facts about were there requests made to have extra agents there? Were those requests denied? Who was in charge? Why, what decision was made not to have uh, Secret Service agents uh, stationed on top of each of these buildings, which is what you saw in that clip when I first started the video, how they've been in this state before, they've done a rally in this state before at the airport and every hangar had um, at least one, two Secret Service agents a station there, okay? So whether they're Secret Service or law enforcement, it doesn't matter who they are, but they had someone there for security purposes. And so that was just an absolute um, utter breakdown. And, and you know, you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna criticize the Secret Service that were on site there. And I think at the, you, you have to have a, a, a balance, right? Because the people that were there were just doing the best they could do in that time. The decisions were already made. Right. So if we really want to blame someone or try to hold someone accountable, it's not the people that were actually there. It's whoever was in charge of managing this entire operation all the way up to the food chain, which would be the Secret Service director herself. She has a lot of answering to do because ultimately the buck stops with her. Yeah. And Evie Pomporis, she's a former Secret Service agent. Evie, good morning. Um, I want to put this map of the, the farm grounds where this event was held last night. So the elevated position where the shooter was set up was about 150 yards from the stage where former President Trump was speaking. As a former Secret Service agent, are you surprised that building wasn't better secured? So when you do a security plan, you've got the, the main security, right? The security perimeter where there's the magnetometers, where people are being checked as they're entering the event. You have the outer perimeter where is when you have an open rally like this, you are extremely vulnerable. I've done these. They're probably the most the most anxious you're ever going to be as an agent because you're trying to secure all of it. Now, the adjacent buildings, you do this in urban environments, you do this in a rural environment like this. You, when, when you do a security plan, you literally, literally put yourself on stage and then you look out as if you were the protectee. What can I see? And if I can see it, it can probably see me. Now, at, for an outer perimeter like that, typically you will have a local law enforcement presence. You'll notice those buildings and the Secret Service works with local police. You have to think of the Secret Service like they're the conductor of the orchestra. They create the blueprint. Okay, so other words didn't happen, right? I kind of feel like she's giving some standard response. Just call it what it is. I mean, this wouldn't normally happen. Um, or if it is something that normally happens, say that. I mean, this is not a time to sugarcoat things. This is a time to be honest, right? So changes can be made for the better. It's not even about President Trump. It's about any president, any person who's assigned Secret Service. If changes need to be made, it's better to rip that band that Band-Aid off now than to keep trying to sugarcoat, well, you know, this is what it is and here's... You know, they, they, they're very careful with their words. And I think right now is not a time to do that. Right now is a time to just be very blunt, direct, and straightforward about what the breakdown was, why it happened, what we need to be doing to move forward on this. Now, here's another point that's coming up about the uh, Secret Service is there's already a hearing that's being uh, called for. Um, there will be a full investigation of the tra tragic events. Uh, this is from yesterday that, that he tweeted this. Um, they will have the Secret Service director there and the appropriate officials. And I don't know how much information um, they're truly gonna get out of her. I mean, it's gonna be a dog and pony show, right? Which is they're gonna, she's gonna show up. They're going to grill the heck out of her. Uh, the people on the left are going to uh, turn this into, well, do you believe that it's because of Trump's rhetoric that this happened? That's exactly what's probably gonna happen. The, the media is already doing that. Um, and in case you guys haven't seen that clip, also, George, we have to point out, no matter who the shooter, what the shooter's motives were, no matter who the shooter is, you are going to hear conspiracy theories going forward. 
No, no question about that. But as, as you, you point out, those statements from J.D. Vance and Vivek Ramaswamy, of course, uh, President Trump and his supporters have, have contributed to this violent rhetoric as well. Well, absolutely, George. We were just looking back this morning at some of the things that uh, former President Trump has said. He warned last March of potential death and destruction if he were charged by the Manhattan District Attorney. Our country is being destroyed, as they tell us, to be peaceful. Uh, Trump in January warned of bedlam in the country if the criminal charges against him succeeded. And of course, in March, he said, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. They're still mischaracterizing his comments. He was talking about the auto industry would be a bloodbath. It would get that that industry would go down in the dumps because his policies are different than obviously President Biden's policies. But they're not going to do that. They're going to take the, the three words or that little clip that they know is going to get the most attention and they're going to use that clip in their own way. It's not even truthful. That will be the least of it. He said he was partly joking and that that was taken out of context. Uh, but those are indeed his words. And you have heard it from supporters as well. And supporters are certainly in some parts angry. And, and let's remember January 6th. Uh, in so many ways for the campaign, uh, January 6th will probably be in the background after yesterday's event. This is a very difficult time for this campaign. I'm sure this week in Milwaukee that President Trump will highlight this uh, and President Biden is going to have to figure out how to go forward with this campaign and what exactly they say. I mean, I wish the news would just get out of the, po the political conversation and just report the facts. Just report the facts. Don't talk about how you feel. Don't talk about what you disagree with. Don't try to dig up these clips and, and use them to push this narrative that it's his fault that he was shot. I mean, that's what they're insinuating, right? I mean, it's one thing to, you know, report facts and things like that. But then to throw that out there, right, like at this moment, I, I just don't think it's actually um, genuine. And the other thing is this. You know, what what else would we expect from the media? We know they are corrupt. We know that they turned a blind eye to President Biden's performance and his declining um, mental acuity. And act, they acted like they were just surprised at the debate when they've been seeing red flags all along. And now they've switched up on them. So we, we can never give the media any type of. Uh, credibility whatsoever. They're going to twist anything they can to keep the views coming in, to keep the clicks coming in, to keep the ratings going up. They're, they're not in the business of telling the truth. However, we called out this mess yesterday, um, and I would be really surprised if we're able to uh, get some people to respond to this more and more and more. I mean, what is this right here? What is this? What is this supposed to mean? Will surviving gunfire be Donald Trump's next appeal to black voters? That's that's the story you want to post after an attempted assassination. That's that's it, right? It, it goes back to the whole race thing, right? It's got to be about the race thing, right? They just can't help themselves. So it, it, it just shows you like the out of touch when it comes to just being tactful and professional and just the divisiveness in this country. And I always say, I wish we could just um, be great at disagreeing with each other, being respectful at disagreeing. We don't have to really stoop to the level of trying to accuse Donald Trump of staging this, which, which is what people have done. And it's just, it's just unnecessary. So as I wrap up here, you know, it's absolutely a failure with the Secret Service. I can't wait for the hearings to happen. We will cover this. Um, I want to see what the responses are. Um, I know it's going to be a dog and pony show. You know, they're, they're not really going to give us the answers we're looking for. We know that to be true because that's how it always goes. Um, however, I do feel they need to be held accountable. If I was still in the military, she would absolutely be resigning. She would be reassigned. There's no question about it. She would probably be relieved. Um, because the whole purpose of the Secret Service is to prevent what happened. And when it happens, heads have to roll. And um, it'd be interesting to see if they actually go forward with that. So that is my mindset. What is yours about the whole Secret Service? And just it's a failing, 
failing situation on their behalf. What do you think about that? Answer this and more in the comment section below. I want to thank you for checking out the video today and we'll see you in the next one.